We are spending the week with this 2020 BMW X6 M50i. And since it is the M50, it has the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. Remember, the X6 is the sportier version of the X5. So you can see around back, the trunk tapers back. About to head up to my parents' house. Gonna bring some stuff there. We've got a couple uh, pieces of furniture, some chairs. I'm gonna fold the seats down, see how practical it is. Slide them in there. The rear seats easily fold down right here with the latch. And then we've got this cargo cover, which is pretty cool actually. It unfolds to cover the rear area because you can see it through the glass. And then if you want to pull it off, it slides along these tracks up and out. Let's see, you can put it back in the lines and it goes back in. Oops, I have it sideways. There we go. It's hard to do one-handed. One of the first things you'll notice is the X6 compared to the X5 is definitely less practical because of the way the roof line slopes down. But with the rear seats folded down, I do have these three counter height chairs in here and we can go ahead and close the rear hatch and it will fit. The paint on this X6 is called Manhattan Green Metallic, and I like it a lot. It's like an olive green. Excited to see what it looks like under the sun. It's a cloudy, overcast day today, but I'm always excited to get a car that's not black, white, silver, or gray. Although, I do have a Nardo Gray RS7, so let's get a cold start. badge means a little bit of a sporty exhaust noise while it's still light out let's do a quick walk around of the exterior so we have bmw laser lights you see it says bmw laser and we get these blue elements in the headlights pretty significant size grills once it gets dark i gotta show you guys what these grills do because uh it's quite noticeable we also have active grill shutters so you see them open and close better for aerodynamics and efficiency on the bottom side of the grill here. That big sensor is for the full driver assist features. Again, I kind of like this green color. Just stopped at my friend Jason's house and he was not a fan. We've got 22 inch wheels. The front tires are 275s and the rears are 315s. That is a insanely wide tire. It's 22, uh, 22 inch wheels with only 30 sidewall profile. So it doesn't ride the best. It's a little bit on a firm side. And then because it's the X6, not the X5, you can see how the rear end angles down very sharply. That causes the rear windshield to be very, very raked and also means your visibility is not that great out the back. I'll show you guys once we're in the vehicle. X6 badge there, we've got the M50i, so not the X6M which just launched. This is the 4.4 twin turbo V8 and we can play count the M badges. We have it on the brake caliper there, on the wheels. On a brake caliper up here, on that wheel too, and then if we open up the car. Another M badge there. This is what the X6 does when it's nighttime and you unlock the car. Watch this. You've got the light going there, and then we have the light up grills, which, holy crap. I mean, it is somewhat of a cool effect, but. It is quite overwhelming. Now, I believe it only does it when it is night out and only when it's parked will it light up like this. I don't think it does it while driving because that would be quite uh, noticeable. I hit the unlock button again. I think it'll light up. That's pretty cool, the carpet kind of looking thing. It does cast light in front of you so it's easy to see as you get around. But the daytime running lights and the whole headlights come on, which is normal. But look at the grill. Can you imagine like an X7 grill lighting up like this. Interesting feature. On the inside, we have some ambient lighting. This does not have the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, so no crazy speaker lights like the M850i we were just driving last week. I'm gonna show you one of the coolest tech features in this X6. It's equipped with what I believe is called the Driver Assist Pro package. So adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. Just have a hand lightly on the wheel right now. If I take it off for too long, the steering wheel will flash yellow lights at me to tell me to take over. Uh, I should do it in a second right there. So you just put your hand back in the wheel so you still have to pay attention. But here's something that's really cool. So just cruising along in the right lane, if I wanna make a lane change to the left lane, I turn the turn signal on to the left, a little arrow pops up, make sure my hand's still on the wheel, lightly touching it, makes a lane change on its own. I did not do that steering input. Let's go over to the right lane now. Just toggle up, little green arrow appears on the right, checks the blind spot, nothing there. 
and the car makes its own lane change, which is kind of fun. But through the entire time, I have to keep a hand lightly on the wheel, give it some pressure, or it will flash those yellow lights and tell me, hey, you need to at least be paying attention with steering input, which is pretty cool. This car can make lane changes on its own. Let's do it again. Left. Just make sure, see the yellow lights pop up if you really take your hand off during a lane change. But when just cruising along, I just lightly rest a hand. It's really dark out, so you can't really see that right now, but I rest a hand there, and we just cruise along. Just finished filming some B-roll of the X6. Gonna put a GoPro on and do some point of view driving for this part of the video. Another practicality test is underway. Camera gear in the back of the X6. I have my smaller Pelican case, a backpack, and then my tripod and slider, some detailing stuff. Just bought a new camera lens too. Bought a 35 millimeter 1.8 for my Sony. The cargo's area is definitely significantly smaller than the X5, but again, for something like this, it will fit everything, but also, this is a crossover SUV type of vehicle. This cargo area is not necessarily that much bigger than my RS7. The RS7 is just as spacious. Everything has just been elevated up a little bit higher. Like the M850i, we have the comfort. Whoa, wait, wait, let me shut this first. Okay. You kick your foot underneath the rear bumper and it will shut. And we can do the same thing to open it as long as the key is in your pocket. That is always very convenient in case your arms are full of groceries or whatever. You can put them in the back of the car. I have the cargo shield down still, so easier access there. These vents, I don't think are functional. Nope, they are completely blocked out. So that's purely an aesthetic thing. It widens the arch a little bit there, but it's not actually a aerodynamic element. And then the exhaust, we've got this surround bezel. The two tips actually do come here. You can see them right in there. So the exhaust actually will come out of the fascia, the hole in the fascia, unlike some other vehicles, which I won't name right now. Diffuser is bodied colored here in this kind of olivish green color. And then let's go around back to the front. So <laughs> I already mentioned how big the wheels are, 22s. Love the way they look, ride a little bit firm. Talk about that more when we're driving on the road itself. Laser headlights. Showed you guys the grill that lights up, gigantic front grill. And then the mirrors look like they're kind of more of like a satin finish, which assuming because this is a press car, I don't think that's like an aftermarket thing. It must be part of the uh, selections. And then, yeah, so there's the cargo. I'm gonna put a GoPro on and let's go for a drive. All right, we're in the X6, latest generation interior. Not quite as highly equipped as the M850i we had last week. Doesn't have the glass controls pack, so the shifter and the start button were like this glass crystal looking finish. Have the latest iDrive system though. This trim can be option in carbon fiber. On the M850i last week, it was piano black interior. Not a huge fan of this textured plastic look to it. Start up the car. So it's a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. In this X6 M50i, it makes 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. It's similar to the motor that you'll find in the X6M, the X5M, the competition version of those, where it makes 600 horsepower and I think 617 horsepower, which is a lot. But in this thing, 523 and 553, exactly the same as that M850i we had last week, is quite, quite a lot. That 553 pound-feet of torque comes on at a very low 1800 RPM. And with launch control, these have been tested to 60 in 3.8 seconds, which is very fast given that it's the M50i, not the X6M. Driving along, it is pretty isolated and comfortable in comfort mode. You've got adaptive dampers. If you put in the Sport Plus, everything sharpens up a bit. Has a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission, X-Drive as standard, but it's a rear bias system. This car is on 22-inch wheels though, so it does ride a little bit on a firm side. It's a significant wheel size upgrade from the base wheels. They look really good, but again, the sidewall on the tires is not that thick, so you don't get as much compliance over the roads. I'm also in sport mode now, so I'll go back into comfort. This is a heavy, large vehicle, well over 5,000 pounds. I've tried launch control, it is hilarious. The ZF8 speed yields pretty quick shifts, uh, especially when you're in Sport Plus mode, it'll give you fast up shifts and down shifts. Like I mentioned, launch control is hilarious. Now, in terms of interior finish and technology, did a quick overview of it, but it's got heated seats, no cool, no massage, those are other optional add-ons. The iDrive system, I keep trying to say MMI because I'm used to so many Audis. The iDrive system is good. It has gesture control, which is a little bit of a gimmick. Um, 
it it works most of the time but some things you can do is like rotate to turn up the volume i don't want to do that because i'm playing music right now uh you can go forward and back to change your tracks and everything and then there's also control of the cameras i will stop and show you guys some of the cameras maybe on the uh other camera what else we've got the digital display right here in front of you it's not quite as reconfigurable as what you would find in like the audi mmi uh audi i um I'm blanking on words right now. The Audi virtual cockpit system, that can be completely changed to fully the navigation map or completely changed to a couple other things. This is a little bit more fixed. It's still very clear. It has some good amount of information displayed in front of you. Here's some of the noises. I feel like some of it is piped through the sound system. Not all authentic. The exhaust is not quite as sporty as the one in the M850i last week, which had a lot of cracks and popples. Popples? That's not even a word. Cracks and pops when you're in sport mode. Uh, this doesn't do that as much. My experience thus far with the X6, initially my reaction was, oh, it's not quite as nice as the M850i I was driving last week. And obviously that vehicle had a sticker price that was twenty over 20000 more than this one. That was like, I think, 123000 whereas this sticker's for just under one hundred. It's like 99900 something like that. It is pretty nimble and handles decently well, given its size. The steering is a little bit on the vague side. Um, it's surprisingly quick. Uh, that That's what has blown me away with these things. They feel like the M generation, of the, pre, uh, the previous M generation performance. Like, this X6 M50i feels as fast as the X5M that I was driving. So I can't even imagine what the 617 horsepower X5M and X6M competitions would feel like for the latest generation. Let's see, I'm going to do something a little bit sketchy. There are no cars around me. So I'm going to stop and do a launch control. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that is quite hilariously quick. And the other thing I noticed when you're in Sport Plus, this transmission will hold gears for a long, long time, a surprising amount of time. Like, they'll just sit there at, like, I'll be merging onto a highway on a freeway on ramp, and it'll just sit there at 4,500, 5,000 RPM, and then you punch it as soon as you get on the freeway. It's kind of crazy. So, if we go back into full comfort mode, I don't think I've used eco mode at all because it just neuters all of your throttle response and everything for the sake of efficiency which the thing is already pretty bad at efficiency uh, it's rated at something like 16 city 22 freeway 18 combined and if i scroll through those screens on the right we are averaging 16.9 woohoo over 230 miles uh so not brilliant that's with quite a bit of freeway driving too what I showed in a little, little clip was the driver assist. So it has the full driver assist suite, which on the freeway is absolutely amazing. You turn on the lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, and when you're in traffic, it has another even extra step where you just sit there. You don't have to do anything. You have to pay attention. There's cameras that are watching you and sensors, but you don't have to touch the wheel anymore. At higher speeds, you still have to have hands on the wheel, and if you wait too long to put your hands on a wheel, it will flash yellow lights at you and issue a little warning and be like, hey, Please pay attention and at least have your hands on the wheel. But it's a nice way to kind of take some of the stress off of driving and take the, uh, it allows you to take a step and relax a little tiny bit. You still have to pay attention. We're at a red light. I think I'll do launch control again. So we put it in the Sport Plus. I'm in transmission to the left, so we're in S1 for that. Uh, I'm actually still in comfort, so let me put it into Sport, Sport Plus, Trans, uh, let's see. DSC traction, dynamic traction control, foot all the way down hard on the brake, make sure your steering wheel is straight, nothing around, and then we wait for the light to change and we can do that. Again, this is on winter tires right now and it's only 37 degrees out, so we're not going to get that 3.8 to 60 foot. <laughs> oh boy, that's just so much fun. Launch control is so much fun in everything. They just start putting launch control in cars that aren't even fast. Like, imagine launch control in a Chrysler Pacifica. I wonder what that would feel like. Probably not as impressive. In terms of living with this X6, driving it every day, 
it's been good. It's a, it's a good freeway cruiser with the technology uh, full driver assist suite on. It rides pretty comfortably. When you have it in comfort mode, the dampers are pretty good. It'll round off the bumps so they're not as harsh. But those 22 inch wheels definitely are a downsize. Around town, it doesn't feel too gigantic. Parking is a breeze when you have all your sensors. Actually, we're at a slow speed now. I can turn on parking sensors and show you guys that. Look at that. So we've got the overview, we've got the front view, and then like the other newer BMWs, it does like the virtual 3D rendering of the car. And then when you're actually parking, you do 3D view here. And then the hand gestures allow you to pan it around. Like, oh my God, that expedition looks gigantic next to me. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of funny looking at that. Uh, and then it has, I think it has parking assist feature. Yes, it does. Automated parking, which can help. Nice blue Focus RS over there. Cruising around downtown Plymouth. I remember coming here when I was in high school. No, I don't want to park. All right, let me turn off these sensors. Let's get, nope, 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 no thank you. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover with this point of view inside drive, uh, showing you guys some of the details and having the first person view of what it's like to just cruise around in the X6. And we may have done something slightly sketchy and launched it a couple times, which is always fun for the sake of YouTube. I mean, it's an SUV that does zero to 16, 3.8 seconds, and it's not even the X6M, so that's crazy. And with that, we'll go back to the other camera to finish up the remainder of this, what it's like to live with the X6 M50i video. Today has been productive. I have the X6 here along with Jeff and Stacy's X5. Jeff and I just filmed a quick video showing the difference between the two of them, and I filmed the review of the X6 today. And hello, Nala. Hi, Nala. What are you doing? Oh my God. They want to be stars. They want to be stars. You guys are going to be on YouTube. You want YouTube, Bella? Aww. You just like smack the car with your tail. Final day with the X6 is the wet and rainy one. Haven't been driving it much, been working from home. About to head out though. I'll wrap up some final thoughts once I'm home tonight. Really like the way this paint looks. It changes a lot in different lighting and I can see what it looks like when it's wet out. Final thoughts about the X6. It's really grown on me a lot in the week that I've spent with it, living with it, driving around. Originally, I've always been more a proponent for the X5 because it's more practical. It's essentially the same vehicle platform. The X6 looks, surprisingly, actually are also kind of growing on me. The earlier generations, I never loved them. I was always like, it just looks like somebody took an M6 Grand Coupe or a 6 Series Grand Coupe and put it on stilts. This one, I think it looks a little bit better. It's still not necessarily a pretty vehicle to me, but it, it definitely does look sporting, as sporting as a luxury crossover can be. On the road, the new lights and everything look pretty good. I was following it from behind. I was like, all right, that's a pretty good looking crossover. Now, would I take it over an X5? I still think I would be an X5 because just the practicality standpoint, uh, but I don't hate it. Now, in terms of the M50i, that has really impressed me. Now. When I first drove the latest generation of the X5, that blue one owned by Jeff, X5, that was just a regular X-Drive 50i M Sport. It has the 4.4 twin turbo V8, but it makes a good like 70 horsepower less than 70 pound-feet of torque. It's down that amount of power. This, at 520 or 523 horsepower, the numbers, it's it's legitimately pretty quick. It's, it's a next level of sportiness. Now, I can't imagine what the newest X5M and X6M competition are like with over 600 horsepower. I really want to drive those. This feels as fast as a previous generation X5M. It's a little more rounded off, a little more comfortable, and which makes it almost better. In terms of normal daily use and practicality, this is what you need. You don't necessarily need that X6M competition because like, let's be honest, you're not going to track this thing. And at 100 grand, it's, it's plenty expensive already in M50i um, build. So, I just completely lost my train of thought for a second. In summary, the materials are nice on the inside. Design is pretty good. It's not quite loaded in terms of options like we saw in the M850i or Jeff's X50 or X550i non-M. So, like, I would absolutely option Bowers and Wilkins because I'm a sucker for nice, uh, nice sound systems with the lighting in them. I would definitely do the glass controls pack. Uh, I would do a different trim, interior trim. I'd probably go either piano black or that wood. The wood open pour grain wood on the x5 was beautiful in jeff's vehicle but cruising along one thing i did learn you have to put the transmission in the sport mode so you take the whole shift lever and move it to the left because it wakes it up i swear the shifts 
from this eight-speed ZF Source automatic, felt as quick as doing dual clutch in full sport plus mode. It, it, fast upshifts, downshifts, plenty of torque and power all across the rev range. It, it, it that's quite fun to whip it around. And a good amount of practicality. I was able to fit a little bit of furniture back there. I was going to make a run to Home Depot to get some moving boxes and this also because I need more because I'm packing up and moving, but I uh, did not have a chance to do that quite yet. Otherwise, in summary, the X6 has impressed me. Latest generation, massive upgrade, has the latest tech. The Drive Assistance Pro feature set is absolutely worth it. Would I take it over at X5? Me personally, I would probably still end up in an X5. If you want the more sporty looking one, it looks a little more aggressive, and you're willing to compromise a little bit of the practicality, the headroom in the back and cargo space, get the X6. This segment is truly growing. You got things like the GLE Coupe, you have the Cayenne Coupe, you've got, I mean, the Urus technically counts, the Audi Q8. Automakers are making these because people want to buy these. They're not buying sports sedans or wagons or anything. They're buying SUVs and crossovers. So it's cool that both exist and you have that option. Make sure you guys check out the X6 versus X5 video I filmed with Jeff. He owns that vehicle. They've put, I think, almost 20,000 miles on that thing. Uh, I don't remember the mileage anymore, but we compared them, tried space, we talked about the tech features, the different options you can do, uh, and design, obviously, on the exterior. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.